Hey, and welcome back to Cooking with Shaki. Today, we are gonna do my world famous filet mignon with scallop potatoes. Also, I'm gonna have a red wine reduction pan sauce to top it all off. It's gonna be magnificent. It's the only recipe you're gonna need for these two things. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna start the scallop potatoes now. And the first thing that we're gonna do, we got a hot pan over medium heat, and we're gonna take some pats of butter, about three tablespoons of butter, my assistant Cam is gonna help me out. We'll drop three in there. One, two, and three. Very nice. So we're gonna let that butter melt down nice and good for us before we throw in our garlic. We don't wanna throw in our garlic too early and burn it. So we got this over medium heat. Once we got that butter going nice and good, then we're gonna pour in about five cloves of minced garlic. Cam, do the honors. All in there. Oh. Good. All right. So we're gonna cook this garlic in that butter until it's nice and fragrant, but not browned or burning. Can you smell it, Cam? How's that smell? Does it smell good? Looking pretty good. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a simple little roux. And this is gonna be the, the base of the sauce for our scalloped potatoes. So I got some all-purpose flour and we're just gonna incorporate this into our butter and garlic mixture until it's kind of a thick paste. So you can kind of see the consistency there. Then we're gonna come back in with about three and a half cups of regular whole milk. And we're just gonna whisk this in really easy until we get the consistency that we're looking for for our sauce. Now this butter garlic milk mixture, we're gonna hit it with a little bit of seasoning once we got the clumps all broken up. Just some simple salt and pepper. This is super, super simple for scalloped potatoes, but it turns out amazing. So we'll whisk that together. We'll kick that heat up to high. And we will let that simmer away after we get it incorporated and get the seasoning onto it. So I'm gonna come back with some kosher salt. Again, salt and pepper to taste. This is up to you guys how much you want to use. I find that about two and a half pinches does it. And then we got some fresh cracked table grind black pepper. About two pinches will do. Whisk that together. So I can see kind of the, the specks are even, evenly distributed throughout the liquid. And then we're gonna bring this up to the boil. Once we have it to the boil, we're not gonna leave it on to boil too long. We're just gonna go ahead and get that to a good rolling boil to where it comes up and then we will pour that over our scalloped potatoes. sauce is done for our scalloped potatoes. We've brought it to a boil, turned the gas off, and now you can see kind of the consistency of it. Not quite that milk consistency, but a little bit thicker because of that roux we put in there 
early on. So now all we're gonna do is simply pour that over your scalloped potatoes that are pre-cut. Thank you to my wife, Kayla, for making that happen. And that's gonna go all over the top. We don't want to drown these potatoes. We just want to kind of get a good even coat over them till it fills about halfway up because if you put it too high, it gets a bit soupy. And that looks just about right. Just about there. All right, now my assistant Cam is going to go ahead and put the Parmesan cheese on the top. That's gonna to give us a nice crust on the top as we bake this at 400 for about an hour. So he's gonna sprinkle that Parmesan cheese all over the top. And I'll help him out. Mmm, delicious. All right. That looks good. Now, we're gonna to go to the oven, 400 degrees for an hour, and we'll be right back with you. All right, and we're back. Now that those scalloped potatoes are in the oven, my buddy Cam here and I, we're gonna season these filet mignons. So we went out to Costco and we picked up four gorgeously marbled filet mignons. I have patted them dry, and today we're gonna to be using my brisket seasoning on these steaks. Now for this recipe, you can go to my other video. We'll put the link in the description when Cam and I made this, uh, this rub for us. But it's basically 50-50 salt and pepper uh, with some Lowry seasoned salt and some garlic powder as well. Uh, we're gonna season these steaks up. We're gonna let them rest and come down to, uh, or come up to room temperature before we throw them into the skillet. So we are gonna be cooking on a cast iron skillet today with some olive oil in the pan. And we're gonna use my Thermapro uh, one instant read thermometer to make sure that we get a nice good medium rare on these fillets because they're Camden's birthday fillets. Okay. All right, you ready to go? All right. All right, let's get them seasoned up. Just a touch of that brisket seasoning. Let's roll. Nice, good crust on there. This is coarse ground black pepper and kosher salt with some Lowry's and garlic. Gonna give us a nice, good crust on these steaks. Now, I usually recommend using gloves. We have clean hands, but I don't have any gloves here today, so. I'm gonna get these nice and crusted. These are big fillets, and they look real pretty. You think this is good? Yep, looks right. good. Just get all the sides. Rookie move if you miss the sides, right, Ken? Mm. It's a rookie move. That looks good. Two. All, right. all set? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So now these are going to sit here and absorb that salt. They're going to sweat a little bit and they're going to come up to room temperature so we're not cooking a stone cold steak. Uh, so we get a nice good crust on the outside, but we maintain that medium rare on the inside. So we'll be back with you when we throw them onto the skillet. All right, and we're back and we're about to sear these steaks that we just seasoned. So I got a cast iron skillet. It's on high heat. It's coming up to temperature. I want to get this skillet ripping hot before I put these steaks in there because I really want to hear that sizzle. So I'm going to get these, this skillet up to about 500 degrees before I go and put a nice hard sear on both sides. It's going to take me roughly about a minute and a half to three minutes per side of the filet to get a good sear on it. I'm going to get the edges as well. And then I'm going to go with a good extra virgin olive oil in my hot pan to sear these steaks. So I'm gonna get the olive oil in the pan, a few tablespoons, and then when it comes up to temperature, I'm gonna go ahead and throw these steaks on. Right now we're sitting at about 240, 250, 260 degrees. Once it gets up to about 500, then we'll go ahead and put these steaks on once we can see that smoke coming off the oil. 
All right, so I got this pan screaming hot at this point, sitting at about 450 degrees. I can see the smoke coming off the oil, so I'm gonna get these fillets on. Now these fillets have been sweating. That's the sizzle I wanna hear in the pan. Now we're gonna get these steaks nice and seared off here. I'm going for a good hard sear on the outside. That'll give us a nice good flavor and a good crunch with that pepper crust with that brisket seasoning on those fillets. So we're gonna let those go about two and a half, maybe three minutes per side, get a good hard sear on those steaks all the way around, top, bottom, and sides in that olive oil until we're ready to come off with a good sear on the outside. Then we're gonna take the steaks off, we're gonna drop the gas off, put some butter, in the pan, some thyme, some fresh rosemary, um, and then we're gonna go ahead and baste the steaks in butter and garlic with that thyme and rosemary. So we're gonna get a good sear first, then we're gonna pull them off and go for the baste. So we got these steaks nice and seared. Now they're not done. They're still an internal temperature of about 100 each. This larger one is about 95. We want to bring those up to a medium rare, which is about 120 to 130 degrees. So we're going to let these rest for a bit. They'll still carry over a bit, but I turned the gas off on the pan. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add some butter and some aromatics, some rosemary, some thyme, some garlic to put some flavor on these steaks that already have that good brisket seasoning on them. So we're gonna baste these steaks, but we gotta get the baste ready to go. So, pan is still hot, steaks have come off, the gas is off, but I'm gonna add some butter to an already hot pan with the gas off. Remember, have the gas off. This is an important piece to have those steaks resting over there because they're still, again, they're gonna carry over, but we wanna make sure that we get a good base on them to bring them up to internal temperature. So we're gonna let that butter do its thing in that hot pan. Again, with the gas off. Now it's deglazing that pan. All of that seasoning and that good beef flavor that we want is gonna go into that butter. Once, once the sizzling has stopped, I'm gonna turn the gas on. Again, it's gonna be low. There goes the gas. And I want to make sure that it's a low gas because I don't want to burn the butter. I don't want to burn the garlic and we're going to add some aromatics. So here I have a few sprigs of fresh rosemary. Fresh is always better. Cam, if you'll give me some time, just grab a couple bunches there. All right, just like that. Right there, toss those in. Thank you, Cam. And we're gonna let these aromatics fry in that, in that butter. Cam, if you'll grab me some more butter out of the fridge. Just to make sure we got enough to baste these steaks. You hear that crackling that it releases that aroma. It smells so good. I'm gonna add a little bit more butter here. Probably an irresponsible amount of butter. All right. And then we got some fresh garlic cloves. Now these are non-peeled garlic. All I did was go ahead and crush those with the knife and added them in and they're gonna give us a nice aromatic flavor. So now that that base is smelling and looking really great, that butter, that garlic, that thyme, that rosemary, that's gonna give a great flavor to these steaks. So we're gonna leave that in the pan and we're gonna add our steaks back in. 
still hear a good sizzle, even though I got this on low heat. Nothing's burning. And we're gonna take those juices right over the top. So now that I have all of that in there, now it's time to baste. Those up there that have been roasting away a little bit. And we're just going to baste away. Now this hot oil is going to bring our steaks up to temperature for us internally. Again, we're going for medium rare, right about 125, 130 internal, and then we're going to pull them to rest. I'm going to use my Thermapen Instant Read Thermometer to make sure that we got a good temp on the inside of these steaks so that they're perfectly medium, medium rare. So now that we've basted these steaks, we're sitting at about, about 125, 130 internal. So I'm going to take these steaks, we're going to get them off to rest. They're going to come up and carry over, and then we're going to go ahead and slice into them. Our potatoes are done. We'll show you what it looks like, and we're ready to eat. All right, so now that our steaks are resting, our potatoes are done, we're going to start on this pan sauce. It's a red wine pan sauce. Choose any red wine you like. My wife loves Apothic Red, so we're gonna go with that. Ooh. We're gonna deglaze the pan here. Perfect. A little more. Don't mind if I do. And that red wine's gonna deglaze that pan. We're gonna scrape all those succulent bits off the bottom. And we're gonna let that reduce. We're gonna let the alcohol burn off. I got some diced sweet onion that I'm gonna add to this. Just for a little onion flavor here. Again, that heat is on high. So we are looking to burn the alcohol off of this wine, caramelize these onions in that wine. Then we're gonna come back with a little bit more beef stock once this is reduced. So we're gonna reduce this wine, caramelize these onions, and then we'll come back with some beef stock in just a sec. So as you can see, our red wine has reduced quite a bit almost to where you can't see any liquid in the pan. Our onions are nice and caramelized. So we're gonna come back with some beef stock. That beef stock is gonna complement the flavor of the beef in that steak. I don't measure anything, sorry. That looks good. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and reduce this beef stock again, still over high heat. We're going to reduce this beef stock down for a nice, thick, glazy red wine sauce. 
Also added a few sprigs of thyme in there just for some aromatics. But we're gonna bring this up to the boil and let it simmer away until it reduces by at least half to at probably three quarters. And then we'll be ready for the finishing touch. All right, so now that our red wine pan sauce is nice and thick, so you can actually see the bottom of the pan when you scrape across with that spoon. So what we're gonna do now, the onions are nice and caramelized. We're gonna take this sauce, turn off the gas, and our good old friend, Mr. Butter. I know we already have red wine, we have sugar, we got salt, we got pepper in this sauce, and now we're gonna emulsify this butter. Just remember, pan sauces, they're delicious things. They're not healthy things. But what this is gonna do, this emulsified butter, is gonna go through this sauce and create a nice sheen, a super rich texture to the sauce, nice satin finish, and it's gonna be ready to go on our steaks. Isn't that right, Coop? Give him a thumbs up. Yeah. We just want to keep that moving around until it's completely incorporated into our sauce and it will be ready. All right, so we're back. We are done. We got our sides our beautiful scallop potatoes. We have our red wine reduction sauce for our steak, and we got the steaks themselves. So let's, let's see how we do. So we're gonna grab this filet. And remember we're going for medium rare here, so you gotta tell me, give me the wow sign when you're ready. Count it down. Three, Three two, two, one. Ooh. It looks good. Boom, baby. That's how you do steak and potatoes.